to another episode of the Bible and Music. Um, okay, welcome to another episode of the Bible and Music. We are exploring the influences of the Old Testament on Western music. We're following the book by Max Stern, mm -hmm. and today we're going to explore the book of Genesis. Right. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. From today, Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Uh, today we're going to focus on English composer Michael Hurd, H-U-R-D. Mm. He was born in 1928. And he lived until 2006. He has a composition called Genesis. And it's a short little composition. Let's give it a listen. Okay. Okay, so this is music that is inspired by the Bible, and this particular song is inspired by a poem which was inspired by the Bible. Yeah. A poem that was is called Genesis. Right, right, by, by a man called Jeffrey Hill. Mm -hmm. um, I was reading through the lyrics of the, of the poem, and I, I don't... I don't, I can't quite figure the inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, it seems to be uh, parallel to to Genesis. It, okay. It's broken down into the days. Um, you know, on the first day, this, and the second, this. Um, but there doesn't seem to be any indication about who the narrator is. Mm. I think, from what I can tell, the narrator of the Jeffrey Hill poem is a man who is observing creation. Okay. Um, God, it could be God. I, mm -hmm. I I don't I don't get the sense of it though because there's one where he talks about seeing an osprey dive into the water mm -hmm. and splash blood on the sands, and that's on the second day, which mm -hmm. it could be. I guess that's when the beasts or no, yeah, where the second day was the beasts were created. I don't remember. <laughs> I, and, uh, we, and, yeah, and only just last week we had talked. Of, we had listened to the entirety of the. I know. <laughs> anyway, so it could be God, but I, I don't. It's, it's not. What's being created is not the same as what's happening in Genesis. Right, right. So I don't know if it is God. There's there's some uh, poetic license. Yeah. To be delivered. Yeah. But the, for the music, I think the music sounds mm -hmm. very nice. I think that the choir is obviously well trained. Yeah, yeah, I like it. And and there's the layers mm -hmm. um, of and from what I saw of the sheet music, the the male voices are really carrying much of the narration. Okay. And there's harmonies happening over top of that uh, because the, I think the melody for the male voices, the lower bo voices, mm -hmm. um, is more straight and more linear, whereas the higher voices tend to have gaps. Okay. Um, so. Well, well uh, I'll keep my ears open for it. Okay.
Okay, I'm having a hard time picking out all the individual lyrics, personally. Mm. But I do like the, uh, the textures that the vocals are creating. They're giving some nice swells. Wah, yeah. You know, things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and again, I mean, I think I think it's it sounds nice. Mm -hmm. um, they they sort of draw out the the lyrics a little bit in in traditional mm -hmm. uh, chanty fashion. Right, right. Um, but but this is obviously uh, more modern. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it's nice. It's again, again, it's nice. I yeah, still yeah. don't know who the narrator is. Right, right. <laughs> I okay. still haven't picked that apart yet. I've, you got me. <laughs> when you find out, let me know. All right. <laughs> Okay, we hit the halfway mark, mm. and like you said, it was very chant-like because everybody was going, and then all of a sudden it broke into this fugue-like, yeah. and it was like this wavy motion. I really liked that. That was pretty cool. So the line that they were reading for that, and this is where I'm, I'm starting to think that the narrator actually is God, mm -hmm. the line that where they were doing that sort of fugue thing yeah. was building as a huge myth for man. Okay. And w what it says, the lines prior to that is, and I renounced on the fourth day this fierce and unregenerate clay. Hmm. Which sounds like God rebuking his creation of man. Right, right. I can't believe I did this, building a huge myth for man, and then the final one is the watery Leviathan, Leviathan being a, a yeah, monster no. of the deep. Right. Um, so, that was building it, and then that, mm -hmm. you know, coming back with the fugue and doing yeah. it again, and the, the tempo started to almost pick up. Yeah, that was really neat. Go to, and that could be, I guess, symbolic of go forth and multiply. Multiply. Multiply, yeah, multiply. Possibly. Maybe. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I just thought that that was a weird line for them to do that on. Right. <laughs> so... There was a part where there was some dissonance, and I think you have to be a really highly skilled singer to sing dissonance. Yeah. Because I think we always fall into harmony or harmonic singing, mm. uh, and and you know it's almost like play um, playing bad is is really hard, you right. know, because you're just so practiced in the playing harmonic and good right that to sing dissonance something that's harsh i think you have to be really skilled at it well i have to say for the for the the choir singing this they are very talented singers mm -hmm. um they they're really good with their timing from what i can tell and, and by the way uh, the vasari singers are the 
choir that's on this album. Yeah. So, I, I, again, I don't know where the inspiration for this comes, because it doesn't seem... They're speaking about the phoenix, which is a mythological creature. Mm-hmm. I don't know that there's ever a rises mention. from it. He burns, yeah, and, he, and then out of the pile of his ashes, he rises He's up reborn. again. So that's the resurrection, which is very Christ-like. Very which I don't Christ-like, know right? What it has to do with the not the, quite the, the Genesis, creation of the world, right. yeah, Genesis. But I don't know. If, I don't know. And what I think is coming across here is because they talk about a brooding immortality. Again, I think it is speaking to the go forth and multiply. Okay. And that sort of man's immortality. Hmm. A brooding immortality where you die and then you're reborn. Theoretically, you know. Mm-hmm. Reborn in, in by through your, your offspring. Mm-hmm. I think that's what's... But now we're getting more in this, where we are now, we're getting a lot more Symbolic. imagery of, yeah, of, of the phoenix. Hmm. But, so, I, I, again, I can't... Yeah. I can't find the influence of the Bible right, right, right now in the lyrics of this poem. Day. Yeah, yeah, it really culminated into something powerful there. At the yeah, end. Um, and they're very clear about the days. Yeah, so it has the structure of the Book of Genesis: day one, day two, day three, day four, but everything in between is. is... Yeah, it, it it's it's weird, and and I think this is the first time where we're getting that God is not the narrator mm-hmm. because he, he says something like I I looked on what does he say exactly. Um, on the sixth day, as I rode in haste about the works of God, with spurs I plucked the horse's blood. So, this seems to be a man on a horse, um, either looking upon or thinking about the yeah. works of God. You think he switched over to, like, Adam's point of view or something? Could be, could be, but I I don't know. Right, right. I don't know. It seems, it. it I almost go back to my original thesis that the, the narrator is it's just meant, an unspecified it's just an unspecified man. yeah and observer. but 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 the mirror is and this is where i think the influence of the bible is is aside from the fact that we see the very clear distinction of days on the first mm-hmm. day on the second day mm-hmm. um i think it's it's mirroring genesis it's saying you know on the first day this was created right and this is what i'm seeing yeah on the second day this was created and here's what i'm seeing that's why when we get to, um, I think we're, we're, I renounced uh, the un, unregenerate clay. Mm-hmm. I think that's creating man, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think he's speaking ill right. of, of I, man, probably through I see what you're saying through sin, and and I, I do think that the the imagery of and and this is where again I, I, it's influenced by Genesis, but I just don't know that it is Genesis. Right. Because then, uh, the I think the imagery of the phoenix does have to do with with Christ mm-hmm. and and uh, the resurrection. So that would make sense. Yeah, but musically, I think this has been really interesting. Yeah. Um, and if you and if you're if, if, to the audience, if you're not a subscriber, if you want to explore uh, chanting, you can check out our other podcast. It's not what you think because I think here, and it, it might not be what I think. That here they're actually trying to do, they're trying to draw back to the chanting, not the Gregorian, because I don't think this is Gregorian, but there's no music accompanying this. It's right. just the, the, the singing. Vocals, yeah. And I think this is a callback to, to chanting. Mm-hmm. 
we're coming up to the end. Okay. It ended very abruptly. Uh, yeah. I didn't expect that to end so uh, final. Yeah, it did seem like it kind of resolved a little bit. I mm -hmm. think they kind of aimed to fizzle out, um, so it wasn't as powerful. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, very abrupt. Um, and no sort of real resolution. Mm -hmm. uh, they tried, though. And in and, and that last little bit that we listened to, they talk about through Christ or men yeah, made free. I heard that. Um, so I, that's why I say earlier that I think I think the imagery of the phoenix is meant to be yeah, about, to about Jesus. Yeah, because um, the last couple the last couple stanzas are are about how man is all about we live by blood and mm -hmm. we're violent bad things and mm -hmm. through Jesus we're saved and right. those who don't accept Jesus and the last the, the last it ends with a with a, a couplet that basically says that you know if, if you don't accept the light you're just going to be rolled over in the earth. Hmm. Um, so That's yeah, cool. powerful powerful imagery. Right. Uh, but yeah, I think there's a lot of Christian symbolism involved here, not necessarily Old Testament. Uh huh. Yeah. So well, of course, uh, Christ uh, is New Testament. Right. So they certainly he certainly bridged a lot of. Uh, area from lands biblical landscape going from the old testament genesis to the new testament of christ but maybe he maybe he wanted the creation the beginning of everything to the resurrection is kind of like cyclical yeah uh the beginning creation of everything and then the death and then mm. beginning again right right so it, it's it's possible one way to look at it anyway yeah again i mean i it's hard for me to see how this fits. Like last week, we explored uh, Corigliano, and it's you can see ob it's yeah it's obvious point blank yeah you have a narrator, mm -hmm. and, and and this week we're exploring uh, this piece by Michael Hurd, which is inspired by Jeffrey Hill's poem Genesis, which I just don't see the true inspiration mm -hmm. pulled from the Bible. I see it like motivating him to write this piece but yeah. it, it doesn't seem to be in any way like shaped by the book mm -hmm. uh, it's weird it's it's almost a standalone musically i liked it yeah musically, musically I, I thought it was interesting like I, I can listen to this and not have any um conscious uh bible references going into my brain yeah and just like it as a pure piece of choral music yeah yeah and, and that i think is part of the reason why i, I can't see it as Bible and music. Mm -hmm. it's, right. it's a nice piece of, of, of choir singing. Mm -hmm. And if you had never told me that the piece was called Genesis, I would just think it was a nice piece right. of... Right, <laughs> which is what I mean, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. As a recap, today's episode is based on the English composer Michael Hurd, and we explored his piece called Genesis. Some other notable pieces by Michael Hurd, if you want to check him out, Songs of Lorita. Mm. And the Shepherd's Calendar. So go do your homework and check out those pieces as well as listen to this one. That's the end of today's episode. We'll see you again. Thanks.